Theology written in the country churchyard, Tigre. This is one of the poems in this book that have many notes written in the margins. It was obviously a serious study in some classroom. The author writes pensively about the occupants of his local village buried in the graveyard and muses on his own legacy and epitaph. I'll begin with just a list of the written notes as best I can make out. First page, one, says it is a poem of transition, and one to four, the setting, evening and country village, still, air, stillness holds, is humming, save where, except, one to six, in a couple of places, to memorize, Rude is unlearned. And for them, no more what they used to enjoy. Sympathetically, he writes of the lives of people. Second page. people not to be scorned. Dignities cannot bring back life annal life. Annals equals history. Nine explain and memorize. Nor you wolf impute equals blame. Storied urn or animated bust equals wealth and family. Pregnant is full. Genial current is natural. Penury is poverty. Speculates as to what they might have done if life had not been so hard. Nine, explain and memorize. Hidden something compared to gems in ocean or flowering desert and see throughout country in the condition of it the results of government. Noble rage, enthusiasm. Third page. It says criminal. Struggling pangs of conscience to hide from us truth. Hide natural finer feeling, artistic genius to flatter with, madding crowd is turmoil. Title for one of Hardy's novels, Insert How to Die, Air Resigned, She Even Gave Up Life Wishes, Casting a Look Behind, Soul Requires, Thoughts of Them Remain, Wanted fires, their simplicity of life. If someone who he knew makes inquiries of his my fate, some person may say, haply is perchance, thee is gray, oft have what gray did. about poet, he would lie down and study the brook, nor at the wood brook was he not to be seen. What one reads, the epitaph, fair science, knowledge professor, large bounty, feelings for others, cruelties is false. A 
Anthology Written in a Country Churchyard, Tigray. The curfew tolls the knell of parting day, the lowing herd winds slowly o'er the lay, the plowman homeward plods his weary way, and leaves the world to darkness and to me. Now fades the glimmering landscape on the sight, and all the air a solemn stillness holds, save where the beetle wheels his droning flight, and drowsy tinklings lull the distant folds. Save that from yonder ivy-mantled tower, the moping owl does to the moon complain of such as, wandering near her secret bower, molest her ancient solitary reign. Beneath those rugged elms that yew yu trees shade, where heaves the turf in many a mouldering heap, each in his narrow cell forever laid, the rude forefathers of the hamlet sleep. The breezy call of incense breathing morn, the swallow twittering from the straw-built shed, the cock's shrill clarion o'er the echoing horn, no more shall rouse them from their lowly bed. For them no more the blazing hearth shall burn, or busy housewife ply her evening care. No children run to lisp their sire's return, or climb his knees the envied kiss to share. Oft did the harvest to their sickle yield, their furrow off the stubborn glebe has broke. How jocund did they drive their team afield, how bowed the woods beneath their sturdy stroke. Let not ambition mock their useful toil, their homely joys and destiny obscure, nor grandeur hear with a disdainful smile the short and simple annals of the poor. The boast of heraldry, the pomp of power, and all that beauty, all that wealth e'er gave, awaits alike the inevitable hour, the paths of glory lead but to the grave. Nor you, ye proud, impute to these the fault, if memory o'er their tomb no trophies raise, where through the long-drawn aisle and fretted vault the pealing anthem swells the note of praise. Can storied urn or animated bust back to its mansion call the fleeting breath? Can honor's voice provoke the silent dust, or flattery soothe the dull cold ear of death? Perhaps in this neglected spot is laid some heart once pregnant with celestial fire, hands that the rod of empire might have swayed or wake to ecstasy the living liar. But knowledge to their eyes her ample page, rich with the spoils of time, did ne'er unroll, till penury repressed their noble rage and froze the genial current of the soul. Full many a gem of purest ray serene, the dark unfathomed eaves of ocean bear, caves of ocean bear. Full many a flower is born to blush unseen, and waste its sweetness on the desert air. Some village Hampton that with dauntless breast, the little tyrant of his fields withstood. Some mute inglorious Milton here may rest, some Cromwell, guiltless of his country's blood. The applause of listening senates to command, the threats of pain and ruin to despise, to scatter plenty o'er a smiling land, and read their history in a nation's eyes. Their lot forbade, nor circumscribed alone, their growing virtues but their crimes confined. Bad to wade through slaughter to a throne, and shut the gates of mercy on mankind. The struggling pangs of conscious truth to hide, to quench the blushes of ingenuine youth's shame, or heap the shrine of luxury and pride with incense kindled at the muses' flame. Far from the madding crowd's ignoble strife, their sober wishes never learn to stray. Along the cool, sequestered vale of life, they kept the noiseless tenor of their way. Yet in these bones from insult to protect, some frail memorial still erected nigh, with uncouth rhymes and shapeless sculptor decked, 
implores the passing tribute of a sigh. Their name, their years, spelt by the unlettered muse, the place of fame and elegy supply, and many a holy text around she strews that teach the rustic moralist to die. For who, to dumb forgetfulness a prey, this pleasing anxious being e'er resigned? left the warm precincts of the cheerful day, nor cast one longing, lingering look behind. On some fond breast the parting soul relies, some pious drops the closing eye requires. In from the tomb the voice of nature cries, in in our ashes live their wanted fires. For thee, who, mindful of the unhonored dead, dost in these lines their artless tale relate, if chance by lonely contemplation led, some kindred spirit shall inquire thy fate. Haply, some hoary-headed swain may say, Oft have we seen him at the peep of dawn, Brushing with hasty steps the dews away, To meet the sun upon the upland lawn. the foot of yonder northern beach that wreathes its old fantastic roots so high, his listless length that noontide would we, would he stretch and pour upon the brook that babbles by. Hard by yon would now smiling as in scorn, muttering his wayward fancies he would roam, now drooping woeful wan like one forlorn, or crazed with care or crossed in hopeless love. One morn I missed him on the customed hill, along the heath and near his favorite tree. Another came, nor yet beside the rill, nor up the lawn, nor at the wood was he. The next, with dirges due in sad array, slow through the churchway path we saw him borne. Approach and read, for thou canst read, and lay, graved on the stone beneath yon aged thorn. The epitaph. Here rests his head upon the lap of earth, a youth to fortune and to fame unknown. Fair science frowned not on his humble birth, and melancholy marked him for her own. Large was his bounty, and his soul sincere. Heaven did a recompense as largely send. He gave to misery all he had, a tear. He gained from heaven, t'was all he wished, a friend. No farther seeks his merits to disclose, or draw his frailties from their dread abode. There they alike in trembling hope repose, the bosom of his father and his God.